The name Murawinji comes from two words in our language. The first word, muta, is the name of a species of native grass. And the second word, winji, means fresh or green. So Murawinji literally means place of green or fresh grass. But to us as local Aboriginal people, we know Murawinji as a place of green grass and waterholes. Even though waterholes is not actually mentioned in that name, it's important to know that because Murawinji is the only place guaranteed to contain permanent water all year round. In fact, if you leave the safety of the Darling River and you're heading inland to the northwest to the Cooper's Creek, Murawinji is the only place in between that's guaranteed to contain permanent water all year round. And it's for that reason that this road that runs through Murawinji was once the main highway for people travelling from Broken Hill onto Whitecliffs or from Broken Hill onto Tipperborough. Murawinji was an important watering point for horses back in those days. In far western New South Wales, in this region, there are 10 Aboriginal tribes, and those 10 Aboriginal tribes include the Wonkomara, the Mullyangapa, the Adnia Mutna, the Deary, the Wilyakali, the Nimpa, the Barkanji, the Burrinji, and the Wanyabarku. So all of those Aboriginal tribes in far western New South Wales all came here to Murawinji as part of traditional ceremony. This range of hills, which runs roughly north-south through the park, is known as the Binguano Range, and this range is dissected east-west by four gorges. So each of the four gorges here at Murawinji are named after a different coloured ochre. The bottom gorge, Old Murawinji Gorge, is named after black ochre, the one after that is named after red ochre, the one after that is named after yellow ochre, and this one which we're in now is named after white ochre which is our sacred colour. And in our language, we call white ochre kopi, K-O-P-I. And every Aboriginal tribe in Australia reserves one of those four colours as their sacred colour. That is, there are restrictions on its use, and normally the local people would only use that sacred colour when they're decorating their own bodies just before they enter into ceremony. So, this little valley which we're standing in now is the most important part of the Murawinji lands. In this little valley, Aboriginal people from the ten surrounding tribes used to congregate to perform secret and sacred ceremonies. Rainmaking, increase, birthing and marriage ceremonies. So this is truly a sacred site in the truest sense of the word. In fact, about a kilometre away in that direction is Snake's Cave, the Aboriginal men's business place where only Aboriginal men are allowed to go. And a couple of kilometres down the valley in that direction is Mushroom Rock, the women's business place where only women are allowed to go. What's most pleasing about this area is that it was the efforts of the non-Aboriginal community in Broken Hill who lobbied government to have this place protected. So as early as 1927, this area has been protected for conservation purposes. But there was a lot of inappropriate behaviour going on here in those earlier days. People were physically stealing pieces of Aboriginal rock art, and they were also scratching and painting their names into the walls of the overhangs to create graffiti. In 1967, the National Parks and Wildlife Act came into being, and the National Parks and Wildlife Service then took over the management of these areas. They then became known as historic sites. National Parks formalised a lot of the existing walking tracks and they built the original campground down the end of this seal road, tucked away in a little gorge over there on the left hand side. In Aboriginal law however, we are not allowed to stay in this valley overnight unless we're here specifically for ceremony. So the fact that National Parks built a campground in here was really quite offensive to local Aboriginal people. National Parks also built the original Visitors Information Centre which was officially opened in 1970. In 1982, the National Parks and Wildlife Service purchased the two surrounding sheep stations, Mutwinji to the south and Nulta to the north, creating 68,000 hectares of national park, three quarters of which is gazetted as wilderness area. About 30 kilometres away to the northeast is the Murawinji Nature Reserve, just under 7,000 hectares. And the Murawinji Nature Reserve is the only home of the yellow-footed rock wallaby here in New South Wales. There's a small colony in southwestern Queensland and the large and very well-known colonies over in the Flinders Ranges in South Australia. The yellow-footed rock wallaby features on the Murawinji National Park logo because this is the only home of the yellow-footed rock wallaby 
in New South Wales. That animal is endangered and we respect it, it has an endangered classification. So we no longer hunt the yellow-footed rock wallaby, but certainly, traditionally, it was on the menu. And in our language, we know the yellowfoot rock wallaby as Wangaru, W-A-N-K-A-R-R-U. So when local Aboriginal peoples heard that national parks had purchased these landscapes to create conservation estate, our community came out and blockaded that gate coming into the historic site from the 4th to the 8th of September in 1983. And what we're effectively saying to government was, we're not going to let any more whitefellas into this area until government acknowledges that we are the Aboriginal owners and we are given a greater role in the management of these lands and our heritage. So within days of the blockade having commenced, government sat down with our community and said, all right, let's resolve your grievances so that we can open this place back up to tourism. The very first thing we ask is that Snakes Cave and Mushroom Rock be immediately closed to the public forever, non-negotiable. We then said we wanted some of the original walking tracks either shut down or realigned. And we also said we wanted that campground removed out of this sacred site area. And finally, we said that the visitor information center must be turned into the Mutawindji Cultural Center to tell the Aboriginal story of these lands. And we also demanded that from 1983 onwards, this must become a restricted access area. We wanted a padlock put on that gate and people then couldn't come in here unless they were an accredited ranger or guide. Anybody can become accredited here at Murrawindji, Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal, we don't care who you are. Because for us, it's more important that this story be maintained and that this story be shared amongst our communities. I think Murrawindji is a great place to visit. I think it's a really nice place to bring children because there is still cultural knowledge alive at this place. Here at Murrawindji, we talk a lot about the traditional rules that were associated with this land. The maintenance of waterholes, even the use of native animal resources according to the traditional moiety and totem systems. Personally, I like to revisit these landscapes from time to time because I think it's a way for us as Aboriginal people to recharge our cultural batteries. And for us, one of the greatest things is to be able to share our knowledge with any visitors to these landscapes.